We're flooded with calls and pilots like the answers on Basic Med. We fly the Cessna TTX, look out Cirrus, and a new place for safety information. And learning by doing. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. A lot of them realize that they're going to be eligible under basic med, but they can't believe it yet. So they call in to verify and say, yeah, did, did the good fairy really come into my life? Yes, folks, it's real. Good things do come to those who wait and wait. And pilots are flooding the medical experts in our Pilot Information Center with questions about basic med, the long-awaited third-class medical reform. And more often than not, they like the answers. AOPA Live's Warren Morningstar tells us the next steps towards the simpler, easier, cheaper medical certification. Every day, hundreds of AOPA members call the Pilot Information Center. Since the basic med announcement, nearly 2,000 calls and most of them routed to AOPA's medical certification specialists. We are getting hammered. Um, we have not had this kind of call volume certainly in, in recent memory. And that's a good thing. Pilots are excited about getting back in the air. Well, rusty pilots who have been out of it for a lot of reasons, but we're hearing from a lot of pilots whose specific reason for stop flying was because of the requirements, the expense involved in maintaining their special issuance. So those pilots are really, really happy that in the majority of cases, they're not gonna have to do anything else now, some pilots are still worried that their personal doc won't sign off on an aviation medical. And we sign off medicals on a regular basis, whether they're, they're school physicals or whether the Department of Transportation medicals for uh, uh, semi-truck uh, drivers. Dr. Brent Blue practices family and emergency medicine. I don't think this is going to be an issue. Plus, the way that the FAA has structured this is if you go to one physician and they are unwilling to sign off because of whatever reason, you can go to another physician and, and have them sign it off, and there's no uh, uh, problem in doing that. Patience is going to be the problem for pilots. The new rule doesn't become effective until May 1st, so why the wait? The two things that we're waiting for now uh, from the FAA are the approval of the forms for the medical certification examination, the comprehensive medical exam, it's described in the rule, those, I understand, have to be approved by Office of Management and Budget first. That could be part of the reason why the FAA delayed the effective date five months after the announcement of the final rule. The other thing that has to happen is we have to get final approval from the FAA on the medical education course. AOPA will provide that course free to all pilots, and as we wait for approvals, AOPA is figuring out the details of the new rule. I give credit to the FAA. They did an excellent job of writing this rule. Granted, they had a lot of good guidance in the legislative mandate, but they still did a superb job of writing the rule, and, and with every, every rulemaking, there's going to be nuances and things that require some interpretation. So we're getting some of those questions and we're immediately getting those back to, uh, to our legal, uh, legal folks so they can communicate with the FAA as necessary. And AOPA intends to have everything that you and your doc need ready to go well in advance of the May 1st start date. Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live. AOPA is supporting the basic med certification with our Fit to Fly resources. You can find it on our website, aopa.org slash fit to fly. And right now, the most important section is the basic med FAQs. We're updating it almost daily. Answers to most questions are on our website. And if you can't find the answer there, Gary and his team in the medical certification department will do their best to get you the answer. AOPA has argued for years that simplifying medical certification would save money for pilots and the FAA, but even we are surprised about how much it's going to be. FAA has finished its regulatory analysis and the cost savings are astounding. Nearly $383 million saved over the next 10 years, most of that in savings to pilots. Here's how it breaks down. Pilots over the age of 40 who have held an unrestricted third-class medical will save $290 million. 
Those of you with a special issuance will save $90 million. The FAA itself expects to save nearly $2 million. And here's another startling number. This year, there are more than 427,000 pilots with expired medicals who will be eligible to get a basic med certificate. Combine that with those who hold a third-class medical who choose to use basic med, and it's a truly impressive number. Check the AOPA website to see if it's right for you. And here's another number that will give you pause. The U.S. Geological Survey says there's a 60% chance that a 6.7 magnitude earthquake will hit Los Angeles area within the next 30 years. So how does that relate to general aviation? Well, stick with me here. The Northridge earthquake was that big. It closed the I-5 and the I-10 freeways. Consider another big one hitting near Santa Monica. It could cut off ground access to the city, leaving the airport as the only way to get critical supplies to the city. I think this airport demonstrates very clearly the value of our airport in the time of natural or man-made disaster. The ability to rapidly respond to community needs and to bring assets directly to the people of Santa Monica and the west side. The event, a disaster relief exercise organized by the Santa Monica Airport Disaster Airlift Response Team and the American Red Cross. 11 GA airplanes flew tons of simulated supplies into the airport. Flight number eight from Torrance and they brought in uh, Red Cross supplies. You can see uh, human uh, blood plasma, disaster relief, relief supplies, water purification tablets, emergency shelter tablets. <laughs> and emergency responders like pilot and pediatric surgeon Dr. Matt Hanna. Disaster air relief teams from around the LA Basin participated in the drill. So the city of Santa Monica's emergency plan names the Santa Monica Airport as a critical piece of infrastructure. And I think today's event demonstrates that beautifully, that in, the, in a time of disaster, the airport serves the community in ways that no other asset can. But the city of Santa Monica is trying to close the airport, even though it's critical infrastructure for emergency response. Right hand, meet left hand. We lost another great American Monday. Astronaut, private pilot, and AOPA member Gene Cernan died at age 82. The former naval aviator was a veteran of three space flights. He paved the way to the moon in Apollo 10, and then was the last man to walk on the moon as commander of Apollo 17. He also commanded a Cessna 421. He told me back in 2012 that flying helped keep him alive. It conditions my brain, you know, you got to keep everything in shape. And I, I tell you what, I used to get, and I still do, you know, you get upside down, do a roll over the top of the clouds, but I get as much satisfaction about it, 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 doing a good approach in bad weather. I mean, I, I just, whatever it is, it's a passion. Remarkable guy, and we lost another real, uh, real, real true American hero, um, at least for those of us who grew up in the 60s and 70s. Anyhow, to see the guys from the Apollo program dying away like that's a real shame, and we'll, we'll miss them. Absolutely. Sorry to see it happen. Yeah. So there's no better way to learn than by rolling up your sleeves and doing something with the help of experts. A group of high school students in Texas are doing just that. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop takes us into the classroom where teens are building an airplane and being immersed in aviation. It's amazing. This is an English class, but that's a great superlative. These students are hard at work building this RV-12. When we get the pieces, we have to take the tape off and then we have to deburr the edges so that there's no sharp pieces cutting into other pieces. There's a lot of tedious deburring and dimpling and riveting. So far we have been working on the vertical stabilizer in the empennage and the fuselage. We are cleaking the skin onto the stabilator. And then we put them together with rivets, with different kinds of rivets. Even the tedious stuff is fun. It's a tall order for teenagers, but these aren't your average high schoolers. The group we got is a really solid group of kids. They want to be here. They're extremely excited about it. And, you know, they're having a lot of fun with it and they're working really hard. Yeah, get a number 30. Teacher Dan Wyatt has brought in great mentors from a local EAA chapter, like serial RV builder and 53-year pilot Seth Hancock. He gets as much out of it as he gives. But it's, it's rewarding from the aspect that, uh, as I stop flying that these people are going to start flying. Then you're going to have to set this up. Oh, I think the mentors are doing a great job helping us out and they really helped us like learn how to do all this stuff and we really would have been lost without them. The fact that the kids kind of grasp it at the point you see the sparkle and then the ambition rises up a little bit. It's extremely exciting. 
I knew that I wanted to be an engineer, but I didn't know in what. And this program has helped focus several of the students towards being the next generation in aviation and aerospace. I loved the class. I'm really excited about it. Um, I've always been really interested in the aerospace industry, uh, space, airplanes, everything. So I'm really happy that I have the opportunity to do this. The hope is that the airplane will be finished in time for the graduating seniors to get a ride in it later in the spring. And from the looks of it, they're right on track. In Georgetown, Texas, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. The students also get hands-on experience at local aviation businesses. They get to work with FBOs and even observe in the local tower. The program hopes to open up as many opportunities as possible for the students. AOPA is working to help high schools across the country. The high school initiative is part of the You Can Fly program and has several parts. We're awarding flight training scholarships to students. We're also working with Purdue University to develop a curriculum that can be used in high schools to develop STEM-based aviation and career and technical education programs. Cindy Hasselbring is the Senior Director of the AOPA High School Aviation Initiative. She says exposing young people to aviation will help them no matter what they want to do in life. Flying gives kids skills that they can't get otherwise. There's leadership, there's responsibility, communication, critical thinking, all of those things, no matter what area of a career they want to pursue, those are really valuable. You can learn more about our You Can Fly initiative on our website. Coming up after the break, a big aviation party in Knoxville. And a speedy Cessna composite ready to challenge Cirrus. Meet the pilots who fly with AOPA Insurance. They love flying and saving money, just like you. At AOPA Insurance, we understand how you fly and provide the coverage you need to keep on flying. Call for a free quote and see which AOPA Insurance plan is right for you. The Red Bull Air Race Series is headed back to the United States for the 2017 season. The Pylon Racing Spectacular will have two stops stateside. San Diego will host the event in April, and then the World Championship will be again in Indianapolis in October. The series kicks off next month in Abu Dhabi. For decades, the Air Safety Institute has provided safety education resources on a wide variety of topics. Now ASI is leveraging safety content from across the industry and putting it into one convenient place. It's called the Safety Alliance. Safety topics are listed with links to articles and videos about each topic, providing comprehensive resources without the need to scour the Internet. Pilots flying around D.C. this weekend will need to keep an eye out for the flight advisories for the inauguration of President-elect Donald Trump. The D.C. Special Flight Rules Area and Flight Restricted Zone will be modified with other restrictions in place from January 19th through the 21st. On Inauguration Day, VFR and IFR GA flights will not be allowed to transit through the ESFRA. Be sure to check your NOTAMs carefully. Another party last week down in Knoxville, Tennessee. Cirrus threw a grand one to celebrate their new vision center at McGee Tyson Airport. A band, aerialists and food greeted Cirrus customers, employees and vendors. Well, this campus here is going to be our customer center. Everything that the customer, all of our customer interaction is going to start here. So we've got deliveries here, we've got service. We will do our training here for both the uh, SF and the SR airplanes. We've got our company store, you know, anything that you need there. We do, of course, insurance and financing, new and used sales. It all starts right here. So everything around the customer, it's here in Knoxville. Cirrus will break ground for the training center in the next few weeks, and they'll continue to build their aircraft, though, all out of Duluth. It was quite a party down there last week. Looks like a lot of fun. It was. They, those aerialists, that was, that was pretty interesting, i got to tell you. That's different. <laughs> and Cirrus dominates the market for high-performance piston singles. Last year, 270 SR-22 and 22Ts rolled off the Duluth assembly line. Textron shipped 23 Bonanzas. But Cessna thinks it has a worthy competitor in the TTX. They sold 44 last year. And AOPA pilot editor-at-large Tom Horn takes the speedy composite through its paces in this pilot review. It was a great performer when Lancer first designed it, but today, 
the TTX is Cessna's fastest single-engine airplane. The Cessna TTX actually traces its roots back to the mid-90s and was spawned out of a NASA project looking for the next generation of general aviation transport aircraft. And it really wasn't until 2007 when, at that time, the Columbia 350 and 400 aircraft merged with the Cessna product line. And it was after that improvements were made, Cessna saw an opportunity in what is now the TTX to fill a, an important need within our aviation family. The TTX is loaded with advanced features, like a wing leading edge cuff that preserves airflow over the wing at high angles of attack. And most airplanes are ordered with the TKS Weeping Wing Ice Protection System. In the cockpit, Side stick controls and Garmin's two-screen G2000 avionics are the rule, complete with a center-mounted touchscreen controller. A standard equipment oxygen system for high-altitude cruising on those long trips, and even a panel-mounted pulse oximeter to monitor your oxygen level. The TTX also has good runway performance. It can take off using less runway than its nearest competitor, the Cirrus SR-22T. In fact, takeoffs are 800 feet less at 7,000 feet and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The TTX can also climb to flight level 250 six minutes faster and 20 nautical miles sooner than the Cirrus SR-22T. In high-speed crews, the TTX can fly you in style with an 85% power range of 800 nautical miles. That same trip will take just three hours, 37 minutes, burning 90 gallons of fuel. Designed to optimize both business and pleasure flying, situational awareness is optimal with the G2000. And for all its high performance attributes, it's easy to land. Bottom line, the Cessna TTX may be one of the best high value, best kept secrets in today's fleet of new airplanes anywhere. Tom Horn, AOPA Live. And that does look like a slick airplane. It is. I've, I've flown every version of it over the years, going way back to Lance Air and all the different iterations. And the one thing that stayed the same is smoke and performance, man. It is a fast airplane. Well, that does it for us this week. Thanks for giving us some of your time. We hope to see you here next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live This Week.